Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Thanks a million for, uh, for coming by. Um, as I said, my name is Oshin. I've been working with the Open Maps team over at Microsoft trying to improve the uh, base map for Open Street Maps. And so, uh, what we'll talk about today is just uh, sort of open source mapping in general with the editorial team, some of the projects that we've been working on, uh, some of the tools we've used, the processes we've put in place, and then sort of some of the results we've seen up until now. So, uh, yeah, I suppose first and foremost, I can just tell you all that we only started this team in uh, November 2017. So we started basically with just an idea of what to do, but not much more of a better idea beyond that. And so uh, starting off that editorial team, we had, uh, we had just myself. And since then, since November, we've built it up to 18 editors, uh, 12 over in Seattle, and then the other six over in Belgrade in, uh, in Serbia. And so with that and some of the development team that work over in Serbia and in Seattle, um, we've been working on the base roadmap of Australia and trying to improve that. So, um, yeah. So just very quickly, just about the open source at Microsoft and how we've been able to sort of work on this. About a year ago, Microsoft were recognized uh, as one of the largest source contributors um, to GitHub. And since then, that, train, that, uh, that trend has just continued upwards. Uh, and as you can see, the numbers there in terms of the uh, repos, contrib contributors, and teams that now exist there. And so having Microsoft having that sort of presence in the open map, or sorry, the open source community has made it very easy for us to sort of get this thing off the ground and start running in the way that uh, maybe there would have been other roadblocks in the way. Uh, so in terms of the open source mapping, one of the things we looked at it at the beginning was from the outset, we were going to have to be very, very much in, in line with the community, uh, as well as sort of like look at several different things from a research perspective before we even started making any edits in it. So one of the things was just looking at what the OSN guidelines were in terms of their tagging and the mapping policies there, but also what was important and what was, uh, what was essential to how the guidelines were implemented from the Australian perspective. So with those, two in, 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 with those two sort of looked up to, we were trying to figure out, OK, if, uh, if we're going to go under the priorities of improving the base roadmap for Microsoft, well, then you know, we want to sort of strike a kind of balance in terms of like how, they, uh, like how they implement the OSM guidelines in Australia, but also sort of be respectful of the way that they did it in, in, in relation to what uh, edits we were making to the roadmap itself. Uh, so the next thing we were looking at was, well, okay, the next part of the research was what data is available. And so we said, is that is it what's available on a local, city, regional, or national um, uh, level? And so what we, we noticed up pretty quickly was that all of the eight territories within Australia, they each had their own road authority network that were uh, road authorities that were tasked with maintaining the data for their own network. And so very quickly we saw on the outset that three of the territories did not really have much of an open data policy. And so this was going to be some sort of issue that came across when we were trying to look at what the coverage and consistency and accuracy was and how we were going to uh, tackle that. But that made all sort of sense from one perspective. But the most important aspect to the whole thing and it to be successful was to us engage with the local open street map community in there. And so what we did when we were ready to start sort of like, OK, let's get involved with this stuff was like we started coming out. And what we did in December was that we announced to everyone on the Talk AU list, this is who we are. This is what we intend to do there. These are the sources that we're going to use. And these are all the people who are involved. And so we put all of this out on GitHub. And so anyone who was interested could come and have a look. And so that was met very positively. Initially, obviously, people are quite passionate about their maps, and so they're like, who are all these heads over in Serbia and the US working on our map, right? But then once they looked at what it was, they could see that, OK, we're not really affecting some of the things that are like administrative borders or anything like that. They're really just looking at you know, what the open sources are available and then kind of confirming that with aerial imagery and what mapillary imagery was there and these sort of things, GPS traces and that. So looking into like how they all communicated with each other, obviously every country and each sort of open street map community is all going to be chatting on a different level. And we saw that the talk lists were tremendously active. And so that was why we came out there. But we also got involved with signing up. Everyone on the team signed up for all of the Slack channels and some of the other forums that people were talking in. And instead of just sitting there kind of watching, we wanted to introduce ourselves individually. And you know, it all became part of the daily work stream to pay attention to what was happening on these channels and what people were talking about. Uh, 
and also to you know offer some sort of insight whenever you could. Uh, all the people that were working on our team had all come from a geo background. Uh, the great percentage of them had all worked in the digital mapping space, and so there was a fairly decent well of uh, experience that everyone could draw from. So another thing that we came across was obviously the uh, change sets. So we've all we all know that uh, the comments on change sets can be uh, helpful or they can be a little bit harsh, and so. <laughs> My first uh, chain set comment was uh, a pretty good lesson when I went in and messed around with a higher priority road in Western Australia. Uh, the local power mapper there was pretty swift to let me know that I had made a pretty poor edit on it. And so um, he had reverted my chain set, which is obviously not good, but uh, what he also told me was he saw that the, like I'd, I'd given my sources what I'd come about to and what he came back was what he gave me tremendously helpful advice about where there was one of the governmental websites that was, uh, we were able to use to confirm when these, these higher construction projects were finishing up. Uh, and on top of that, I came back and we started a little dialogue. And he told me, oh, this is like the aerial imagery that's best up to date. This is another one, like this is terribly out of date. And you know, aerial imagery assets are always difficult to tell which is the most up to date without just studying them. So from this, we just realized you know, the best way to go into each of these localities was possibly go around using that who's around me tool to see who's active. Uh, and who's up to date and who's involved with it and ask them, you know, we're going to come in, this is what we're planning on doing, this is the data set that we've been approved to use, uh, so any advice or tips or anything like that, and every single person that we asked came back and said, oh yeah, this is what you should know, you know, there's no apostrophes in that data set or they're missing spaces, um, here's good Im imagery assets to use, and so again, it was a really, really positive response, and so uh, after that, we realized, yeah, you know, this is the way to go. And so it started off really on the right foot. Um, so with all of this sort of in place and us moving in there and starting to do this, we started setting up some of the projects that we were going to get to, right? So looking at all these, we had this sort of balance that we had to strike between every one of the projects that we went to. You know, what are the OSM guidelines? What are the local policies? How do they apply them? And um, what are the subtle nuances that they have with their sort of way of mapping? And then what is the sort of structure that we want to put in place? Where do we fit between that as well as like, you know, balancing what Microsoft had set us to do for their priority list? So each of the projects that we did, uh, this is sort of the, the way that we approach the design of it. So uh, these to date are all a list of all of the projects that we've done. And I think it's important to say that every single one of these edits was done by person. There was no automated edits or anything like that. And so like I said, it's really roads that we we're going after. So straight away, we're looking at the, uh, the geometry, the surfaces, the completeness of it. And so when we're talking about completeness, we're looking at, um, you know, we have three basic sources that we can look at for almost all of these, right? We have what's an OSM, what's uh, available to use from the government, uh, and then we had a corroborative source that we could sort of compare these two against to see how does that stand up to either of these. So geometry and surfaces, and completeness, that was all sort of stuff that we could kind of break up into territories, into grids, and work off of them um, to what we saw. And so we went after like you know the top, the top uh, prioritized localities for all of these and sort of worked outwards that way. Another thing that we were really, really concerned about was like, do we have enough turn restrictions? It's very hard to tell, are all of these going to be in place? And so looking at that, we had got some licensed probe data. And from that, we were able to look at over 50,000 possible turn restrictions that were absent from uh, the data. And then looking at that, we were able to add about 16,000 turn restrictions that were in place, verifying it through like aerial imagery and the road markings that we can see from there. Um, and so these three sources, sort of triangulating them and trying to find out where the gaps were, were really, really helpful. And uh, the dev team over in Survey did some great work uh, looking at creating some algorithms in these comparisons when it came to things like the road name. So uh, we had all of these sort of falling under the same thing with slight tweaks to sort of the algorithm of how they compared them. And so we had, uh, you know, invalid candidates spoke about kind of like very close but not quite the same spellings. Um, the conflicting suffixes was the difference between Sydney Lane and Sydney Avenue. And then going in and trying to verify through the government source just which one was correct. And so all in all, we ended up fixing about 10,000 of these street names in the data there. And um, that was all through these three sources we'd sort of look at in order to kind of fig figure out what was what. And so using that, what we did was we used a combination of what was available in open, open source. So we used a lot of Jossum. We didn't use an awful lot of ID Editor. 
And so we were also all using QGIS on side of that to load some of the data sets to have a look at. Um, additionally to that, we also looked at some of the other ones and some of the internal tools, but this was all well and good. But what we really wanted to know is that we weren't really interested in terms of like how many edits were being made. It was really about sort of the quality of them. And so we went in to try and figure out, well, how can we look at these? At the beginning, we were using OSM CHA, but as these were coming up, they're already published, so it's not much use to kind of go through that way. And so what we had to do is we had to devise a kind of a human and also an internal way of doing this. And we looked around, and another open source tool that was there was the humanitarian uh, OpenStreetMap Taskmaster. So we looked at this, and what we did was we brought this in, and what the team developed was a plugin that allowed us to take it down from the OSM server. Uh, an editor could work on it as usual, but then upload it to a Microsoft server that could then be downloaded again and validated and either sent back for fixing or else moved on to publishing and then checked again and put up to the OSM server. So um, this had two sets of eyes looking on each of the edits before we published them out onto, on, back onto OSM. Um, and within that, we started developing our own internal paint styles so that we could see you know, whatever was brought down from the Microsoft server had been given a different tag. And we could look at that and see, OK, this has been touched by the editor. And we need to go in and verify these particular edits that they've made. Uh, and so this greatly speeded up the time. Um, so the thing was that, like, you know, how did this all come about? Or what were the actual results of this work that we had done over the last several months? So looking at it, we could see right away, I think as of the 19th, you could go in and see that like nine of the top 27 editors in Australia all belong to the editing team. Um, all in all, we added 35,000 kilometers of new roads, 22,000 kilometers of new named roads, a bunch of turn restrictions, and then also we're cleaning out Osmos issues as we went around, resulting in about 62,000 different change sets that we did. Um, so I suppose those are all numbers. What was the actual effect? There we go. All right, so this was the actual effect of what we got, got out of it. Uh, so along the y-axis here, or yeah, sorry. Along the side here, we can see that uh, these all say P5 up to P11. And so what they represent are what we call planet builds. And the planet build is basically a snapshot of the OSM data uh, at a given time that we can sort of take down and just sort of do evaluations on. And these are probably taken every, about every eight weeks on average. So this spans back uh, seven, a bit, quite a few months. <laughs> and so. Along the x-axis, what we were looking at was what are the rates of change. And so the blue was, represents named roads, while the green represents uh, total roads. And so between each of these builds, every eight weeks, we were seeing a rate of growth within each, both of those features between 1.5% and 2%. And the farther we went along, obviously, the gaps were getting a little bit closer. And about Planet 10 started, that build started in November. So that was the start of the editorial team. And while we can't be like, completely sure, but we can probably say quite well that we did certainly contribute to that double the rate of growth that we had seen from the previous planet builds uh, in those two aspects. And so we didn't measure the turn restrictions or some of the other aspects, such as road surfaces, but we certainly saw that it was kind of uh, moving all in the right direction. Um, so yeah, uh, and here are all the people that did it. Um, very helpful bunch, you'd say, um, uh, but yeah. Between now and then, we were pretty pleased with the work that we did. And so what we can say is that like, we were moving all in the right direction. And obviously, the further that we go on, we can uh, reduce some of these processes, sort of increase the tools, uh, and make a better availability of the open source stuff that's available, while also being able to give some of that back to the open source community themselves. Um, and yeah, I think I actually beat the times that I had uh, practiced this presentation in. <laughs> so, yeah, that's it. Oh, whoops. Really? Nice. We have a lot of time for questions, <laughs> and we have already some questions. Uh, the result of your efforts. Uh, go into Microsoft Bing Maps, or are there other products where, we, where do you, those results uh, of your work go into? 
Uh, well, well, what will happen is that we'll, we're really only just looking at that base roadmap of Australia. And so the roadmap of what we'll work on and what features we'll work on is still sort of to be determined. Um, so we're just trying to close out what we're doing there in the Australia thing. But there, there wouldn't really be any limit in terms of if you wanted to look after water bodies or uh, national parks or something like that. You could really look at, I think, any sort of tier of them. So I'm, I'm curious to know uh, why Australia, like from a Microsoft perspective, any particular reasons? And like, how do you intend to sort of continue this work like regionally or like within Australia? Like now that it seems like, okay, this project has gone on very successfully. Mm -hmm. So like, what are the next steps for you guys internally? How are you thinking about it? Um, well, we the, the next steps initially what we, we went after Australia was because it was a large market, but it also had a, a fairly thriving open uh, open street map community and a, and a pretty reasonable open source uh, open openness towards the approach of what we were looking for for the open source data. So because of that, that made sort of a a, a, a good reason to sort of go in there. Um, and then, you know, as I was saying, the roadmap of where we're working to next is sort of still to be determined. So we're still working on that data within Australia. Um, and, and so we still have to kind of see what are some of the other gaps that we can continue to kind of come together and, and sort of fix and edit accordingly. Hi. Um, I think that at the beginning, I guess at the beginning, uh, Microsoft had some uh, requirements or some expectation uh, before starting. And so my question is, after completed this uh, this test, uh, uh, all the requirements uh, were satisfied, uh, or uh, I, I mean, uh, which was the rate of satisfaction at the end of the experiment? Well, I think uh, the, the best way we're going to be able to see it is just how, the, how people react to it when, when those roads you know, get released onto the Bing maps. And so when they start releasing those roads out there, we'll be able to sort of judge how the users look at it. Um, how will there be some sort of comparison before with what was in the Bing maps there? And so I think that will be probably like the, uh, the, the greatest sort of uh, test case from it. Um, like I said, I think uh, one of the most important things was just how it was welcomed by the OpenStreetMap community. It, it takes an awful lot of work to build up the, to, or sorry, it takes a lot of work to build up trust, but it can take like, you know, one really bad mistake and that can all be sort of shattered. And so to that, we're looking at it and they're looking at it like with both of those kind of lenses on it and, and so far so good. But uh, yeah, we'll see, how, we'll, see how the, we'll see how the users in Australia think of it. One, um, what was Microsoft using prior to uh, sourcing roads from OpenStreetMap? And the second part is, uh, is Microsoft using a download from OpenStreetMap when pushing it to Bing Maps, or is there being value added to it uh, post-extract? So that is to say, is it if things are being pushed back up into OpenStreetMap, which is improving the roads network for all of Australia, is that exactly what is being used in Bing, or is it just feeding into a larger data set? Uh, yeah, so so Bing is its own provider at the moment, and so that that the open or the open street map data that we've fixed will be sort of piped in that way. Um, but everything is done then on open street maps, and then we just take it down from there, and then we input that into into Bing. So uh, yeah, that will slowly sort of happen over time. We'll be able to sort of move that in there. How are uh, how are you validating turn restrictions? Sorry. I know you guys have done a lot of turn restrictions. Mm -hmm. Is there like a validation mechanism to know that the restrictions are correct, or like are you getting any feedback? Is there like a mechanism in which you know, okay, probably something is wrong? Uh, well, the the way that we were able, to, we were only able to sort of add it when we were positive. So that's why we only had sixteen thousand ones that we could do, and and that we were able to confirm by like looking at the aerial imagery where a mandatory road would have, there would be a uh, a turn on the road that would be left there. If not. What we would do is we would leave a, uh, a map note or else affix me on it and request one of the local users to go and have a look at it and they can get, get around to it whenever they sort of did or can. Everybody on this side of the room, <laughs> please ask question also on the other side. <laughs> are, you, are you looking at rolling the program out wider to other areas of the world? Uh, yeah, I think that's the the intention would certainly be there that not to like leave it standalone within Australia. I think um, 
I think that 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 would be just a decision that would made, be made sort of higher up in terms of like what what verified being the next sort of best markets to go after and and how that figured into their their valuation of what markets were more important. But uh, the idea is for the plan to keep on rolling. Yeah, yeah. I hope so. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> So if there are no more questions, we can uh, thank our speaker.